Warning up front, I'm not an electrician and I am not a mechanic, just a guy out messing with his RV and truck in the desert, doing some electrical mods. But uh, don't copy what I do, do your own research and test things out for yourself. I could be doing it totally wrong. Okay, let's get to the video. Hey guys, Ray from loveyourrv.com. So I'm out messing around in the desert, uh, working on a mod, kind of entertaining myself. And the project I have is to use my truck's alternator to help charge my batteries. So a couple of videos ago I installed the, the Wi-Fi add-on for the Bogart Trimetric Battery Monitor system. And of course, you know, I have the Bogart Solar Controller. So when I did that, um, the guy sent me out the Wi-Fi unit for a review. And he also sent me a new uh, controller because uh, my old controller had older firmware, so he wanted me to have the latest firmware. Anyway, long story short is I ended up with a second solar controller. So I thought, what am I going to do with that? So I decided to reuse it and use it as sort of a DC to DC converter so that I can wire it into my truck and then plug in when I'm towing and the, and the truck will go through this solar controller to charge my batteries while we're underway. At the same time, the six panels on my roof will be charging the batteries. So I should be able to get a little more energy when we're traveling. Also, I can use that solar controller for my ground panel. Since I have six on the roof, I could, I could probably max out this 30 amp controller, especially as we approach summer. So by having the second controller, I'll be able to get an extra five or six amps in. Anyway, that was my diagram on it, and for the truck, um, what I'm doing is I'm coming off the battery here, and I put a 40 amp breaker here just for a circuit protection, and under the truck, I ran basically along where they ran their towing wire, I put a heavy 4 gauge cable, and at the end I have a trolling motor plug, because I did want to have a high amperage <clears throat> 12 volt plug back here, I was, I was kicking that around, so that I could plug my Viair air compressor into it, um, make it easy rather than clamping onto the batteries. I could just plug in, and also I could use that port for uh, when I transfer water to the rig um, using my 12-volt uh, water pump. So it'd just be handy to have a good, a good 12-volt uh, plug back there. So anyway, let me go show you how it's going. Okay, we'll start with the battery here. So for wire, I chose a, a four gauge, um, I think it's called TriStar. Anyway, it's very uh, fine strands and it's very pliable, so it'd be easy to run through the, the truck frame underneath. And I attached it, I looked up and I found out that, because uh, on this, this uh, RAM I chose a 220 amp alternator over the 180, and I think the 220 amp version comes with this, this part here it's called the high amperage power point you can see there's a 250 amp uh, fuse right there there was nothing on top so it's just kind of an open open lug so I attached my uh, my wire to that now this fuse is 250 amp I'm probably gonna find a smaller fuse as I go I'll probably maybe find a hundred amp because really all this fuse is going to do is protect this wire from from here going down behind where I put my 40 amp breaker. So let me get a flashlight so I can show you back in there. If I can see down there. If you can see right there there's a switchable breaker. So that way I can turn the system on or off. And also that breaker will protect the wire that's going to the back of the pickup. So really I just have to protect, protect the wire between that and this lug. 250 amps is kind of iffy, I'd like to get a little bit lower, but I'm out in here in the desert, so all the stuff you see is just sort of what I had on hand, other than I was able to buy that wire, but everything else I sort of had kicking around the RV, so I'm kind of using the parts I have, and in the future I'll, when I get somewhere where I can order parts, I'll probably change the, change the parts, but anyway. That was a good good thing to find there, made it very easy for me. So it goes down to that 40 amp breaker. Then I went underneath the truck 
basically ran it mostly along the I-beam. That's where they ran their big heavy wiring bundle with the, the tow cable and stuff. So I kind of followed it and used uh, some uh, zip, zip straps to, to hold it in place all the way to the back of the pickup here. And underneath, I was able to go up and put a port right on the other side here. Go around. Right there. So this hole was here conveniently. I think that maybe is for in-bed lighting. It has this little plastic thing. I think it's an option if you order in-bed lighting, that thing there. So I was able to take my hole saw, which I had already on hand from when I drilled a hole in the RV for one of these uh, trolling motor plugs. I think it's a Marinco or I'm, there's a couple different brands, but I had just the right size hole so I drilled it out and then I could get access behind there. Um, so you can see the four gauge wire. I had to reduce it right here to more like an eight gauge so it would fit in, fit in here. Um, just added some silicone to help keep the wires from coming loose. And then this will go in here and I'll be able to do up the ring connector at the back. So let me show you where I put the ground wire underneath. We'll crawl underneath here. Yeah, so rather than running two heavy four gauge wires at twice the cost, I'm just using the frame as a return. So I just drilled a hole right there and uh, put on a connection right there for the ground and ran a separate four gauge wire right up there. So there we be, a nice little high amperage DC port. Um, some may ask, why didn't you use the, the existing port there that you use for your tow vehicle? Um, well, the amperage on that's actually quite small. They use pretty thin gauge wires, so I wanted something a little higher in amperage. And also, I'm, I'm using that when I'm towing. So, let's see uh, how we're going to get that power out of there and into the, where the batteries live in the storage compartment of the trailer. A few years ago, I decided to get a ground panel and use it for camping down here in the desert where I could move it around to optimize the sun angle, especially in the winter. And for a wiring, I used a 30 amp RV power cord, mostly because it kept all of it nice and neat and tidy in just one big wire. And it's heavy enough that it just falls flat, so less of a tripping hazard. Especially also when I'm in the truck, I, I had it hooked up and I didn't want the wires flapping and flying around. So I already have this wiring done. It just uses the 30 amp plug to connect. And you can see how I ran it back and I used a marine connector, clamshell connector that you, they use in boats to run the feed in. So I'm going to reuse that and we'll see how much amperage I get. I may have to beef it up, but I'd like to basically keep this system because then I can just plug my ground panel in when we're camping and then I'll be able to plug the truck in while we're underway and charge off the alternator. Here's my kind of Frankenstein concoction for the time being, just made the parts I had. I had quite a bit of this old solar wiring, so I just doubled up a lot of it and made a cable. And I picked this up at a, a RV swap meet thing. I think I got it for like about 12 bucks or something. And then so I would just have to plug this into that port when I'm towing. And then I'll be able to plug this in to my existing uh, wiring. Should work. Let's go inside and I'll show you how I, I've hooked up the old controller. There we go. So there's the two Bogart controllers. So this one, um, we have six panels on the roof coming into it. And then it goes out through this breaker and into the batteries. And then the old one, this is the, the cable coming from the, the ground panel there. Um, it goes into that controller and it's coming out on this wire and then it's going through this breaker. I'm going to get another one of these breakers, but I just... I couldn't find one in town, so I just stopped at an automotive place and just got a little 40 amp breaker for the time being and just wound this. It's kind of just temporary. I'll pretty it up and get a, a nice breaker down the road. But anyway, that'll work 
for my test arrangement here. So, like I say, when I'm on the ground panel, this controller will be running the ground panel. And when I'm charging off the truck, it'll be going through here. So let's maybe uh, give this thing a test. Let's try hooking up the ground panel just to make sure we're getting what kind of uh, amperage we're getting through there. Okay, I got my handy dandy little clamp on meter here. Let's clamp it on there and we're getting 5.1 amps off the ground panel. Let's check what we're getting off the roof array. And we're getting 21.4 amps. So we're getting a total of 26.7 amps right now, which isn't too bad. It's only around 9.30 in the morning, so that should increase as the day goes. So now what I'm going to do is hook up the, fire up the truck, hook it up, and we'll see how much amperage we can get off the truck's alternator. So I'm getting about 12.8 amps. Here we go, a little quieter in here. So 12.6 amps, 12.5, somewhere around there is what I'm getting. So there we go, about 12 and a half amps. Um, I tried it early in the morning um, when my batteries are a little more depleted in the rig and it was a little colder out and I saw about 15 amps, but I've also seen it drop down to nine amps. I think what I'm fighting is that this truck has a an intelligent battery monitor system um, over on the negative post there's a, a pickup here a shunt so it's always measuring current in and out and so it's it's unlike the old alternators that just kind of ran a lot of times at flat out 14.4 volts this thing it'll get 14.2 volts but i've seen it drop down to like 13.9 i guess once it thinks uh, the batteries are charged it's regulating so I'm kind of fighting that regulation also I have kind of voltage drop issues um, not too bad on the big heavy wire going back I measured about a 0.2 voltage drop so if I got 14.2 at the alternator I got about 14 at the tailgate plug but then I'm losing another 0.4 volts going in because I have fairly thin wires they're like about a 8 gauge going in so by the time it gets to that controller, I'm looking at just over 13.6 volts, um, which if you had pretty low lead acids, it would be putting in a lot of power, a lot more current, but I have the lithiums and they, they tend to stay higher. So they usually need a little bit higher than that. So I'll have to play around. I might try thickening up the cable that's going from the truck into here. That's one option that I have, but anyway, it's still a, a decent enough use. It's uh, kind of like uh, when I'm driving, I'll get some freebie uh, amperage going in, even if it's only 10 or 15 amps and not the max 30 that the controller can put out. It's still better than nothing. Like I say, work in progress. Any suggestions? Always appreciated. Um, as far as the truck goes, people probably ask, why didn't you put a a solenoid in there. Um, I just don't want to introduce that complexity right now. At this point, you know, it'll. When I, the only time it could hurt the batteries is if we stop for a long period of time. It could drain the battery. But uh, I got that switchable breaker in there, so I could always turn it off. Or when I unplug the plug, I'm, I'm stopping the the flow of electricity, anyways. Also, when I stop, the battery will go down to about 12.8, and I don't even think it'll be enough to. Uh, get any current going through this system so the likelihood of running the truck battery down is not too great but I may put in put in a, a solenoid in the future like I say work in progress anyway thanks for watching Ray from loveyrv.com cheers everyone